Hello and welcome back to Tasha Could Make That. Today's our fourth Wondrella Knit Along video. Even if you're not in the knit along, if button bands or blocking are things that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, or if you've never knit a bat wing style sleeve top down, stick around. We're far into the knit along at this point, and we still have some folks joining and some folks that are wrapping up. That's okay, because the beauty of YouTube means that these videos will be here for you at whatever pace you're going on your Wondrella. Even if you decide to knit it in the future and need some help, you can tune into the playlist with all the videos then. Today we're close to the end and we're covering the button bands, knitting the batwing sleeves, and blocking your final cardigans. Let's get into the button bands first. In the pattern, I actually have you knit the button bands before the collar and the neckties, but you can knit the bands whenever you want to. You can see already I've started the sleeve over here and I haven't done the second one and I've only done one of the bands because I'm showing this to you all on video. <laughs> Here's why you left a locking stitch marker in when you were knitting the body and started the neckline edging. That marker indicates where you start picking up the stitches for the button band on the left front and where you end picking up the stitches on the right front. You can see I've already knit the right front band already and I'll talk about this really long tail that I've left in a minute. But remember in our third knit along video when I said it's okay if you accidentally forget and remove this marker? Because that's totally something I do all the time. But if you forget and you remove it, it's not a big deal at all. While from the front, it's actually kind of hard to distinguish where the neckline edging starts. All you have to do is flip it over and it's super easy to tell where the neckline edging starts and you can just start from right there or put a new marker in if you'd like. Now I give you a few options for the button band so you can decide what you want to do. Because Wondrella is meant to be worn buttoned, if you don't mind pulling it on overhead, you can scrap the idea of knitting buttonholes entirely and just knit both bands plain like this and sew the buttons on after. You can even sew up the edges of the bands together. That's how I approached my black one and my pink one, and that's why I left this really long tail on my blue one at the end of knitting the button band, because then I can just use this same tail and save myself weaving in some extra ends. And for my black one, which I knit second, I actually didn't bother with the buttonholes either. So I just sewed the buttons right on and sewed up the button bands together, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do for my blue one. Now, if you wanna keep the buttonholes, in the pattern, I also suggest that you can face the button bands with ribbon on the back, like I did on this sweater here. This is a great idea for cardigans with negative ease that you plan to wear button to help prevent gaping across the fullest part of the bust, but you absolutely don't have to do this if you don't feel like it. It's just a tip and something that I like to do, and it looks really nice from the inside too. And I walk you through how to do this in the pattern. Now, if you are doing buttonholes, which again, I'm not, I walk you through that in the pattern too. But you wanna create your first and last buttonholes about a quarter inch away from the top and the bottom of the button bands and then space them evenly from there. I leave this to you basically because it depends on which buttons you pick. You might want five or six or seven. And so I don't wanna give this exactly how you should do it based on a number of buttonholes that you might wanna do. So I give you kind of the general rules of how you can do this. Wondrella has a very narrow button band. So the buttonholes I recommend are just simple yarn over buttonholes. So it takes less planning than say if you were working a three or four stitch long buttonhole. And here are the buttons that you helped me pick in our Slack group. So I'll be using these for my Wondrella. Sleeves are next and our last thing to knit. As I talked about in our first knit along video, Wondrella is a bat wing sleeve cardigan, but knit in a modified drop shoulder style, so the sleeves are easy to knit. They take a while in the beginning because they're much deeper than a normal sleeve, but they're shaped quickly, so it's exciting when things start picking up and they get going a lot faster. Because of the construction method, in this design you simply pick up stitches around the entire armhole, join in the round, and start knitting. It's just like if you were knitting a standard drop shoulder sweater with the sleeves knit top down where there's no sleeve cap shaping, unlike a set-in style sleeve with a shaped sleeve cap. So you just pick up the stitches and just start on knitting. It also means that if you made any changes to the depth of the armhole on the body for any reason, you can use the pickup stitch rate given in the pattern, which is approximately two for every three rows, to see how many stitches you end up with on your needles and compare that to what the pattern tells you. And you might just have to do a little bit of easy math to make sure that you end up with the right size sleeve and the cuff. It's similar in how our knit along video two in the section for changing body ease, I talked about changing the number of stitches. You could just compare your stitch count to the original. If you end up with say 116 stitches on the needle and not 110 stitches for your size, that's six more stitches. So you'll just need to squeeze in three more sets of decreases in the sleeve shaping because for the sleeves, there's two decreases per shaping row. 
Anyway, once you pick up your sleeve stitches and join in the round, you'll be smooth sailing for your sleeve and you'll be on the way to finishing your sweater. And our last knit along topic, of course, is blocking. I'm a big proponent of wet blocking. Some people prefer to steam block and if your yarn recommends that you do that, obviously go ahead. But one of the reasons I love to wet block my swatches and my final projects is because, well, someday I figure I'm gonna have to wash my finished projects and basically I wash them the same way I block them. It's also a huge help in areas where you've picked up stitches or have a seam. I'll show you what I mean. Those areas tend to cause the knitting to pull in a bit and look a bit more bulky. You can see how the shoulder seam is doing that in my yarn on the unblocked blue sweater. It just looks more pronounced and won't lay as flat. You can also see that in the area where the sleeve meets the body, where the stitches were picked up, where the sleeve almost is sucked into the body a little bit. You can see that when I tug on it a little bit. After blocking, this will lay much nicer, which you can see in my pink version, which was wet blocked. I use lukewarm water and a small amount of wool wash or delicate soap and soak the project for at least 20 minutes or, you know, however long I remember that it's sitting in there. You know, could be an hour. <laughs> when the sink or tub is filled up, gently squeeze the sweater a bit to make sure everything gets good and wet. Be really careful handling the sweater and don't let it drag out of shape when it's so wet. I try to cradle it in my hands as much as I can. It's really just like if you were hand washing any hand washable item though. I press out the water by hand first, then lay it in a clean towel and roll it up to gently squeeze out as much water as I can. The more you get out now, the sooner it'll dry. I fold the towel back on the sweater once and roll it up and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Then I unroll it and roll it back up in the dry side of the towel and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze again. And then I lay it out to dry and block. I've had these blocking mats for eons, but a lot of people use those foam play mats for kids. You can also block it on a towel too if you don't plan on pinning. I often block by measuring certain key areas as I go to make sure I'm hitting the dimensions in the schematic as close as I can and make sure I didn't accidentally stretch anything out of shape. You can use pins if you want or need to coax it into shape, like if it's a little bit smaller than you wanted and so you want to aggressively block it a bit. I often stand my blocking mats up against a heating vent, so I pin with a lot of pins so it keeps the sweater on the mats without drooping. And the next day after blocking, you'll be able to wear your final Wonderella cardigan. And that means my work here is almost done. Our last knit along video will be in two weeks and that's just the wrap up and final project reveal. I hope some of you knit along participants will be finished and reach out to me to show off your final projects in the last video, but at least you'll get to see my finished Wonderella. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, happy knitting. Bye.